welcome to my community on Afrocentric Television Channel 15.8. This is a station that revolves around the African community in the diaspora. But in this case, we're talking about Houston as the community. You know, we bring about what affects our community positively and adversely, you know. But anyway, this week on this episode is going to be about us and how we can grow ourselves. You know, there's an event coming up put together by GABA. GABA is the uh, Global African Business Association. Um, what they're doing this time is to bring you financial literacy and also um, teach you how you can be better with your customer service presentation and how you can grow multiple stream of income and all of that. To do that will be two of our very beautiful ladies. One is um, Uche Akib. Uh, she's an author, a Nigerian. Uh, she's an expert on customer service and also Jennifer Harris. Jennifer Harris is a professional, um, you know, that will be teaching us about the financial literacy. And the next segment also will be, we'll be talking about something that is deeply, deeply affecting Africans all over the globe. Uh, when we talk about, you know, the fraud, when we talk about xenophobia, and also an incident that we can never, ever forget about easily. That is September 11. May the soul of the departed rest in peace. Anyway, we will be right back for more. Just stay tuned. Don't touch the dial. Welcome to my community on Afrocentric Television Channel 15.8. As you all know, this is the station that brings about what's happening here in Houston amongst the African community especially. Well, today we will be talking about customer service and um, financial literacy, basically. And to do that, we brought two of our friends here. One is not new to the studio. Uh, she's an author. Uh, she's a customer service expert. And also our friend of the studio, um, <laughs> Uche Akib. Hello, everyone. And joining her to talk about the financial literacy um, is uh, Jennifer Harris. She is the she is a financial coach and the CEO of uh, Princess of Wall Street. That's interesting. I like that, Princess <laughs> of Wall Street. So we're going to do something about stock and all of those yes. things today. And I, I know you're, you're specializing in stock options and mm -hmm. stuff. And, you know, and you, you want to talk to talk to us about um, having multiple stream of, um, of incomes, right? Very essential. Okay, so so t tell us, and, and it, it's all going to be happening with um, under the initiative of GABA, GABA being the Global African Business Association, correct? Yes. So, yes. first off, let let me let me talk to her because we're talking money. <laughs> let, let, That's true. <laughs> yes. So, how what what prompted you into uh, teaching people how to make money or how to do more with their you know time in making money? So my uh, I got into trading because someone heard of all the ideas of businesses that I want to create. Mm. So they were like, and I was like sixteen, and they At were the like, time. yeah, and they were like, you need money to create those ideas the way you want to. So I was like, okay, how do I do that? And they introduced me to just trading stocks at 16 and they were teaching me as I was working at a restaurant when I was 16 and then once I got older and I left college and I was like okay this is something that I can do and it helped me build three businesses that I have now and so I was like people need multiple streams of income you hiring? to keep them coming <laughs> <laughs> I want to make my money <laughs> but I do teach trading so you can earn money that way so that makes sense you know I mean that's a way to give back too right yeah. so and, and you a customer service expert here um, you know the last time we had you on the show we talked about how you know one can grow their businesses um, you know, using certain techniques that, that had helped you as a person. And you even put that in a book where you taught people or you teach people basically how to, uh, you know, use even themselves, um, the word of mouth and things like yeah. that to bring in more customers. Yeah. And this is something you're also working with GABA to educate 
um, Africans and who, whoever cares to know. Yeah. Right. So t tell us a little bit more about customer service and, you know, what your goal is, you know, with this um, GABA program. Okay. So first of all, GABA is all about empowering the African business to grow. And one way you can empower the African business to grow is by making them realize that customer service is the key and the essence of the business existence in the first place. So GABA has invested their resources to help African businesses grow and know that if you're in business, you're there to solve a problem. A problem, yeah. So if you should put your customer first. Now, um, yeah, I don't know if you know about Adebayo Ogunlesi. If This is how important customer service is. He bought the second largest mm, Gatwick Airport. A London Gatwick Airport mm. in 2010 for 1.5 billion pounds. So when he got interviewed and they asked him, what is your strategy? He said one thing. He said, my strategy is to give first class customer experience. That was all he said. And in one year following the acquisition, mind you, before in 2009, before the airport was bought, mm -hmm. they lost, um, the UK government lost I know. I, over I, seven, eight Even if you asked me to fly into Gatwick, I wouldn't. Exactly. I, I used to, but you know. So they lost over seven, $3 million. But then he bought it for so pounds, sorry, I'm talking in I pounds. understand. Yeah. But, but he bought it for $1.5 billion and pounds. And then when they asked him, all he said was first class customer experience. One full year following his acquisition, he if made, he made he, the paper was worth two, million, two, two billion pounds. And what did he do? He spoke to airlines. He said, first class experience is all I want. And now everybody wanted to fly in through London got the airport. Week. What the government could not do, he did it, and the only power he had. But was you know, the sometimes, experience. sometimes government have power over things that people do. So, and government employees, like they say, not that I'm quoting anybody, okay. just they say, um, people working for the government, they more relaxed they're more because, relaxed, yeah. yeah. So, but if it's a private owner, mm -hmm. um, you you want your business because everything is invested in that, and you yeah. want your business to, to you know, to work for you. And so you, you are on top of it. You check up on people. You make sure your, your vision, what you envision when you're buying into that yeah. business is brought to reality. That's true. And, and that's why I think, you know, sometimes the government needs to step aside for people, for people to, come, to, yeah. to, do, to do their... However, though, someone else would have come. And if they had not put the customer experience first, with the airport already losing mo that much money, they would struggle to even get to the stage where they would break even. And that's but why he had the right strategy. Customer service is very, very it's key. important. It's, it's key. key. I mean, so if you're going into a business, so to say, um, if you make making money your first priority, you may fail. Or there's that every tendency that correct. you will fail. Yes. But if um, you go into that business to solve a problem, mm -hmm. but you understand that you can flip this to uh, make it something that is... Uh, uh, a source of revenue mm -hmm. also and you marry the two which is one of the things GABA is doing now yeah. that bringing both y'all together to educate people on how you can uh, you use your customer service experience to build your financial literacy mm -hmm. and that can also generate revenue for you so it's a win-win kind of situation if mm -hmm. you ask me that way yeah. so what should people expect you know under your um, teachings so first we'll go over why multiple streams of income are important in business because with Uche Cheating customer service, people make hasty decisions in business because they need money because their business is not making money. Mm. So they take away from the customer service aspect. So I'll bring you <clears throat> ways to make money so that you can give your all to your business and not make those hasty decisions just because you need your business to make money. Mm, because you, you may just make the wrong decision just, just trying to, yeah, money. because you'll be pushy and mm -hmm. thinking. Yeah. But if you have multiple streams, you can leverage it. Even yeah. if this one is not doing well enough, this one may be yeah. filling in for this, right? Yeah. But that doesn't mean you should leave this alone. Yes. And that's where customer service experience yeah. comes to play also. Even Oprah, I, I remember her saying she has about 3,000 um, sources of revenue. Yeah. Some bring five dollars, mm -hmm. some bring thousands, some bring millions. Okay. Some just some just bring you know regular dollars per the day, you know. But at least don't stop investing. Yes. And one of the things I, I learned in business is you invest in people. Mm -hmm. 
if you invest in people, mm -hmm. you know, um, you help them learn the ropes, you know, lace the track for them. Um, by the time they, they get there, you would have empowered somebody yes. at the same time empowering yourself. So Jim Ryan, whom uh, I, I adore, he said something. If you tell your business to 10 people, if you teach 10 people your business, mm -hmm. and they bring in money back to you at whatever percentage, you are making 10 different income from 10 different mm -hmm. sources. Yeah. They are only making from one, but a lot of people would think, no, I want to be the king. I want to hold it yes. on to myself. Yeah. That's the mistake they make. So how does word, word of mouth work and help in customer service? When you get that wow experience, aside from price, you have to think about it. Aside from price, what's the big deal about your business? So you, if you give them that wow experience, I would go out and tell somebody else that you, you say you want to buy something. I'm going to be like, buy from this place. I went there, I saw for myself, they would take good care of you. Just go. And that way, you, everybody want to, want to be treated right. We are humans. Mm. We want to be valued. I, I have an African store that is about one mile away from me, but I would go five miles because I get better service there. So I would drive five miles to go to buy go something get from, from there. there. Instead of dealing instead with of, someone yes. with a nasty attitude. And then my, I mean, my friend would ask me, where do you buy your stuff? I'm like, just drive to that place. Don't even go to this place. <laughs> and, and, and it does so matter, that's, that's right? It does matter. Does that's, that's what that's I was talking to. I was talking to up. the CEO and owner of um, uh, Wazobia um, African Market the other day. Yeah. I was telling him, you know, I was asking him how, how he was able to do it such that he built from one small store to a bigger one and now to the largest in Texas. Um, um, you know, he just told me it's customer service. You know, when you treat people right, mm -hmm. um, when your people get, and you do more for the community, and they mm -hmm. see you do it. He said, he, That's part of customers. Yeah, yeah, you do for the community, and they, they see it. Just like the last time we, we had a Wazobia anniversary or something, he gave out two round trips ticket to, to anywhere of your choice in the world. Mm -hmm. He yeah. gave out, I, I mean, I was there alive. This wasn't yeah. someone, something that I heard. They say, I was there. He gave out big screen TV, gave out cash, cash prices. Um, and fed the whole community. If you care to come out, there's food for you. You know, those are things people do when, when they give back. And I'm thinking that's what GABA is about. Yes. GABA is the Global African Business Association. Yes. And your CEO is going to be here also, um, um, uh, Akinyemi Akindele, yes. all the way from, is it Indiana? From Michigan. Michigan, Michigan sorry, Michigan. Michigan. Inkstar. He's so passionate about Inkstar. Oh, I, oh, he, I don't know. I, I keep asking yeah, him sometimes. I said, if you were born and lived in Nigeria, I don't know, maybe you'd be as passionate. But you are just so he passionate so about passionate. Africa. I, I must mention that this seminar is free. He just wants you to come and learn the skills. That's beautiful. That that's, see, that's, that's giving back to the community. Yeah. And people see that. Uh, people, yeah. Of, of course. He so, is so passionate about one, it. One of the things I learned you guys are going to be talking about is um, how to deal with negative feedback, especially yeah. when on when um, people come to your store or when they buy from you online or wherever, yes. and they come back to your page and just try to badmouth you, um, yeah. say something nasty or say something crazy. And so this is something people need to come learn how to deal with them, yeah. turning that negative frustration into a positive, a positive yeah, why that. So, that will even bring you more customers. Yeah, so now social media is a thing. So everybody that is not brave enough to talk to you face to face, they go to social media and say anything they want to say. So most people just go and bash businesses on social media. You don't just ignore that because that would be like you don't care. So mm. how do you handle the situation so that when other customers see that review, they know that you handled it correctly and know that, okay, this is where I should go because they actually do care. And it's not just about, let me have good customer service, just for the sake of having good customer service and my business will grow. You just have to be passionate and care about the customer because they're giving you money. They're the reason. You're if, in if existence customer, anyway. Exactly. That's why you're still in business. Because if they don't patronize you, your business is going to fall. Mm. And if you don't care about them, it's like you having a, uh, a, an AC regulator where you set it to 70 and then it gets to 70 and come back down. Mm. It will never go past mm. that 70. So you're actually limiting your business if you don't truly or you're truly not passionate about the customer you need to okay fine you're like okay what do the people need what what product do they need also care about their feelings care about their experience when they starting from when they walk in 
you know, the environment and everything. It, it requires skill. You think you, some people think they know because they have a good attitude. Mm. Good attitude is not enough. You also need that skill too. Fantastic. So you, you uh, on the other hand, um, we, we're talking um, financial literacy. You, you're going to be teaching people how to do trade, mm -hmm. right? So we'll go over the basics of getting into trading because mm -hmm. I actually have a course which is called the Queens of Wall Street to teach people how to get into day trading, to take that money and put it into your business to make it bigger. So you don't have to rely on a nine to five job. Mm. You can go ahead and- It could be a side hustle. Every day you can make money to put into your business to make it bigger than you thought it could have been. Okay, so um, is, it, is it just stocks or uh, Forex? Um, mainly stocks, because I like that it's more regulated than Forex. And then also we'll talk about RITs, which is investing in real estate mm -hmm. through the stock market. Because some people wanted to get into real estate to build that residual income, mm -hmm. but they don't have thousands of dollars to, to put a down payment. Property. Yeah. But you don't understand that you can pay maybe $200 for RITs and own a part of all the Popeye's buildings. Mm -hmm. So when Popeye's pays rent, you get a check in the mail. So people don't understand that those avenues are out here. So I will teach you. To how to go out here and see those avenues. So how about things like Bitcoin? I, I'm kind of biased about Bitcoin because yeah. it's so new and people, it's hyped up a lot. But one thing, once it is, is once you understand mm. how to chart it, how to see where the lows are and the highs are, and then you can get in and learn how to make money from it. But people have to understand, people get in on the hype of it and they lose money and then mm. they're upset. But once I teach you how to chart and see where pricing is. And then you can predict. You can see. By your, so I don't like to tell people, buy this or and buy this that. Price. Yeah. No, I so. want you to see what I see. Because if I am going tomorrow, I still need you to be able to make money. Right. So I teach how to see those trading Let, Let's not give out all the secrets <laughs> yes. here today. Because we need, we, need we need them to come. Yes. To, um, <laughs> So tell, tell us, when is this going to happen? When is this training going to happen? This is going to happen or, on... It's not training, it's a workshop. It, it's a, yeah, it's a seminar. It's more like a workshop and seminar. It, right? Yeah, so, so. it's going to start... Um, it's going to be on the 17th of October. It's going to be on Thursday. We had to think of the best day that African businesses are slow because the weekends are usually busy for them. Mm -hmm. I want to give people the opportunity to attend. So we had it on Thursday morning from 9.30 a.m. to 12 noon. That's and right. there's going to be light refreshments, so don't worry, just come and um, learn as much as you can because this is an investment that has been made by GABA for you. Well, thanks to GABA for giving um, something back to our community, especially here in Houston area. Um, I, I lent is going to be at the Savoy Drive Executive Center. Yes, it's going to be uh, at the Savoy Drive Executive Center, 6200, on the 12th, uh, yeah, 12th floor. So we had to do it in the middle of the of town so that everybody can have access yeah so it's it's in a, it's not too far from us here yes <clears throat> so it's um <laughs> so let me read out the the address is 6200 savoy drive um suite 1202 yes. houston texas 77036 yeah so it's within the same zip code as we are here yes okay fantastic and it's going to be on a thursday at uh on october 17th, 17th. yes between 9 30 a.m and um, is there a website if they need to um i think the website is gaba network gaba network dot, dot com is it dot, dot com or dot i think it's dot com i'm it's sorry dot com. <laughs> i am so sorry it's dot com. no it's okay so gaba network, gaba dot, network dot com, dot com um, yes. so we we encourage people to be there yes. to learn about the customer service and how that can help you improve your business mm -hmm. and also how you can you know tackle obstacles and turn the negative energy into a positive, uh, um, a potential, make them a potential customers, right? And also teaching you about financial literacy, how you can trade, uh, learn how you can see from the bird's eye, not just uh, being thought or being asked to trade certain um, uh, options. But in this regard, uh, I encourage you all to come out on Thursday at 9.30, between 9.30 and 12 noon, on Thursday, October 17th, yeah. at Savoy Executive Drive Center, yeah. right? So um, 
I hope you guys are going to be there because I will be there. I need to learn more. I need to make multiple streams of income. These few ones I'm doing is not enough. I, mean, <laughs> I, I, more I, 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 I need to add more. I have children. I have mouths to feed. You know, I, I'm sure you do too. So don't let me keep you all, but, you know, stay tuned. Don't touch the dial. And thank you, ladies, for uh, opening your network to others to learn and to grow the African community here in, in the Thank Houston area. Thank you Thanks to Gabba. <laughs> so don't talk to that, stay tuned. Hello, sports fans. Welcome to another episode of Sports on My Community. I'm very, very happy to come your way again today after missing last week's episode, of course, but I'm back. And of course, I'm very happy to be here. My name is Bayon Le Arashi. Tuesday was the 18th year anniversary of September 11th attack on the United States where about 3,000 people from every part of the world lost their lives in that particular unfortunate event. And of course, Americans came out on that day to, of course, remember those heroes that fell for the greatness of this country. And of course, we pray that may their souls continue to rest in perfect peace. Of course, I have a lot of soccer stories for you today on the show. So, let's go with it. My name is Bayon Le Arashi. On, on Monday, of course, Monday, September 10th, there were lots of international friendly matches and, of course, European qualifiers across the world because most of the leagues were, on, were, were suspended at that particular week, of course, and our own Super Eagles were also in action. They were supposed to play two games, but they eventually played one, which was a very, very good friendly match. And, of course, it was a relatively new, brand new Super Eagles squad, of course, as they went to Dnipro Stadium in Ukraine to play their Ukrainian counterpart. It was a very, very good game. And, of course, one particular player that made his debut in that game, two of them actually made their debut for uh, the Super Eagles with goals, of course, Joseph Aribo, his name is Ayodele Joseph Aribo. He plays for Rangers Football Club. He made his debut for the Super Eagles wearing the number 10 jersey. He scored a very, very good goal after a very, very good work by Kalu himself, giving the pass to former Arsenal player Alex Iwobi, who now plays for Everton. And of course, he passes the back into the box. And Aribo finished very, very well from just six yards to give the Super Eagles one go ahead of in that particular game. And I'm sure you'll be seeing the video as this particular report is being read right now. And of course, seconds later, Villarreal star man Chukwe is a Samuel of almost doubled uh, the advantage for the Super Eagles in that game. They dominated the Ukrainians in the first half of that game and they could have actually gone all the way to win that first half by four to five goals, but they didn't do very well. They didn't finish most of their goals. Some of them were selfish, but of course, it was a very good show by the Super Eagles. Of course, Victor Osimen, the young star, he's in a very, very good form right now. And I really wish he can continue with that form. Already some very, very funny debate is already going on about him. Some people are already comparing him to the legendary Rashidi Yekini, but I think that is too far for all Super Eagles fans. Let us take it easy with the young man. Let him grow. Let him continue to play his game. But, of course, he showed passion. He showed so much that he really wanted to play the game and he wanted to play for the Super Eagles of Nigeria. He scored a penalty, making his debut uh, for the Super Eagles by scoring that goal, of course, for uh, via a penalty kick after Kalu was also brought down in the box as well. They went to the halftime by two goals, winning two goals to nothing. But, of course, the Ukrainian came back strong in the second half when the guy that played left fullback for Manchester City, Zinchenko, of course, that day he played the midfield for uh, Ukraine. He, he just made a split pass behind the Super Eagles defense and finished very, very strongly for to give Ukraine one goal uh, back against the Super Eagles. And, of course, just as they were about to kick off the second, uh, the, the, the goal, that goal, they scored the second. Of course, that goal shouldn't have stand. Of course, that goal was actually handled by the striker that finished that particular goal. His name was Yaremchuk. He shouldn't have gotten that goal. Shouldn't have been awarded to him because after uh, the goalkeeper Uzoho saved the ball, his hand actually deflected the ball back into the box. But of course, the referee went to consult with the assistant referee, and the AR said it was a goal. So the referee awarded it, and it ended two goals each for the two teams. So it was Super Eagles to uh, Ukrainians, of course, two in that one. 
very, very good game, I must say, overall. I must give them about 7 over 10 overall in that game. They did very, very well. It shows that we have future uh, for the Super Eagles. We didn't have most of the established players that we know in the squad. Will Fred did, did not play. Uh, the guy in uh, uh, Spain, Kenneth Romero, did not play. But, of course, we still have a very, very good representative for Nigeria and Ukraine. Moving on from that particular one now, Cristiano Ronaldo. You know who? He scored four goals as Portugal beat Lithuania in the European 2020 qualifier game on Monday also. The Juventus forward now has scored 93 international goals. Unbelievable. 16 just behind Iranian legend Ali Da'i's world record. He scored an early penalty in that particular game before Viatatus and Rescovicius equalized for Lithuania. Ronaldo's 20-yard shot went in off the hand of the hand of Lithuania goalkeeper Anestas uh, Setkus, of course, and he scored two more from Bernardo Silva passes. William Cavallo, injury time, give them the fifth goal, and of course, giving uh, Portugal a very, very big lead in that particular game against Lithuania. Cristiano Ronaldo is 34 years old. He has scored 93 international goals for Portugal. Do you think this guy is stoppable? I think absolutely not. I think he is unstoppable. He is definitely in a class of his own. And of course, who don't doubt him. He might just beat that record uh, being currently held by that Iranian legend as well. All the best from here to Cristiano Ronaldo. And we look forward to seeing him in the UEFA Champions League this season, of course, along with his fierce rival, Lionel Messi, doing their thing in Europe as well. Finally, on the show, Peru, they ended Brazil's 17 match on beating run with a 1-0 uh, friendly win in Los Angeles on Monday night. Of course, Luis Abram scored the only goal in the 84th minute, inflicting the first defeat in over a year on the five-time world champions. Brazil, of course, the introduction of forward Neymar, Vinicius Jr., Lucas Paqueta and Bruno Henrique at halftime made little difference to an off-color Brazil. They were off-color in that game. They were just everywhere. They didn't do uh, what we know they can do best as Samba boys as they are. Brazil did defeated uh, Peru in the final of Copa America earlier in July this year. Uh, Why they were able to? So it was like a revenge for Peru in um, on American soil on Monday night. Meanwhile, Inter Milan striker Lotaro Martinez scored a 22-minute hat-trick as Argentina beat Mexico in a friendly in San Antonio. Argentina won that particular game by four goals to nothing. Paris Saint-Germain midfielder Leandro Paredes scored the other goal from penalty spot as Argentina were without Lionel Messi, Sergio Aguero, Angel de Maria completed in the first half. That's about the best I can bring to you this week on sports on my community. I will start showing you guys something very special from next week on the show as we prepare for the 2022 World Cup in Qatar. Of course, a few weeks ago, they launched the official emblem of that particular championship. And I hope I have a very, very big impact in that particular tournament. So till next week when I see you guys, God willing, my name is Bayon Learashi. Keep doing sport. Bye-bye now. Welcome to CPAX Global Logistics, where your ultimate satisfaction is our goal. We make your shipping needs a worthwhile experience. As a licensed freight forwarder, CPAX Global Logistics offers air and sea freight, procurement and supply chain, project logistics, warehousing and storage services. Call us at 281-820-9000 or 832-593-3067. We offer prompt, effective, qualitative services and damage-proof delivery is our guarantee. What's more, we offer the lowest competitive rate for your shipment. You can call us at 281-820-9000 or 832-593-3067. So, to ship your next products and goods across continents on the next available flight or ship, at a price that can't be beat, come to our office, located at 8180 Southwest Freeway, Houston, Texas, 77074 for your shipment and logistic services. CFAX Global Logistics, the trustworthy and reliable partner for your logistic need. Hi, this is Houston Police Chief Art Acevedo. I want you to know I am Afrocentry. Welcome back to my community on Afrocentric Television Channel 15.8. This is the station that brings about 
what's happening globally, especially to the African community. But today, we're in Houston, as always. We want to talk about the situation happening all around Africa right about now. And even in the States, we, we learned there are some guys caught on fraudulent um, acts and also the xenophobia um, acts or the xenophobic attacks on other African nationals in, in Africa or in South Africa precisely. We, we, we just want to talk about that quickly because this is um, lives are being lost, economy is going down. And we just want to educate ourselves some more and see why things like this that keeps happening and what we can do to stop it. And to talk about that is none other than a professor. Professor, I call him Prof. You know, his um, name is Professor uh, Patrick Omar Sagi. Um, he's a lecturer on African history and his thoughts about six different universities in North America, both in the U United States and Canada. So. Doc, I mean, Prof, I'm sorry. I keep, I'm, I'm just used to calling you all of those. Welcome to the show. It's my pleasure being here. Thank you for coming back again to talk about this. I know we had you when I first started here. You were mm -hmm. rightly my first, um, you know, we talked about politics and, and stuff. Yes. And, you know, with your wealth of knowledge on, on Africa and the history of Africa, tell us why are we going through this? Or what is going on in the mind of a common African when they come overseas? and they want to live a life in the fast lane, which is one of the things that lure them into trying to uh, make or uh, get rich quick. You know, that syndrome is kind of worrying them. Or, you know, is it something, is it kind of like, like a mentality or they just want to grow too fast? Well, I think, I, I think I'll take the latter. They just want to grow too fast. I mean, you show up in America, I mean, coming from maybe, I mean, an African country or Nigeria in particular, uh, the first thing you notice is that, whoa, whoa, you look at uh, maybe you drive by a car lot where cars are being sold, and you see all these numerous cars, and you ask yourself, who's going to buy all this? Hmm. And you immediately or instantly start to think, I should be able to get some of this. But the, the real concern for me has always been, there's a patience that's needed in ac accumulating wealth in America. Mm. It's a very, very simple process. You know, you've got to cut your coat according to your size. That's the only way you can either be wealthy or at least manage a decent life. Now, most people then see the American system having a lot of weaknesses. And you just want to take advantage of it. And you want to take advantage of it. And one of those weaknesses has always been the fact that there's a, a particular number mm. that the American system believes in so much, but people from other cultures just think it's a weakness. That's a loophole. Yeah, the social security number that carries your, an embodiment of your entire life. And identity, yeah, basically. Your identity. And most foreigners look at it like, a number? Mm. I can pick this number from anywhere and reestablish an identity, even if for a short while, to make money because they are desired. They can't be patient enough to build on those. I mean, on what the American system actually wants you to do, to stay consistent, keep a job, work hard, and make more money. You know, I know a lot of young graduates that you know maybe are, are teaching in the in the school system. Mm. Fifty-five, sixty thousand. They go to work seven to four. They get out of there on the same Monday to Friday or weekend. Their managers in McDonald's they earn another 25000 a year because they're managing either the night shift or something. That's building wealth. That, again... And you can do that over time. And I, I can and do, yeah, they do know. that. Most of them do that to pay off their loans, their student loans mm. and all that. That 25000 they probably half of it goes to student loans every year. But they might also then have a great fancy car. Or they're working for it. That's, that system is unique to the American culture. And a lot of people that come from the outside, instead of seeing that that way, they see what they consider real weaknesses and they try to exploit it. Hmm. And that's why you find there's a huge, big makeup of people in the fraud, in the you know, in the identity fraud scheme. Yeah, but but you know, while I believe that's lack of contentment, mm -hmm. the there's a stigma that comes with it. You know the minute number 
of people that would commit um, this fraud or fraudulent acts um, has been has rubbed off on every other Nigerian. It, look, there may that's be. the unfortunate thing about it, it's now an identifier, basically. Yes, it is. Why? But look, that's the way societies work. I know people don't like the word stereotyping, but stereotyping is real. You look again at, let's take away the identity, uh, identity uh, fraud issue. Let's look at another area where Nigerians are highly prominent in the crime, and that's medical insurance. Mm, mm. Why is that the case? Because again, there's a huge number of Nigerians in that marketplace, and a few of them again see that this is such a look. Anytime you're dealing with government, you might just look at it that this is a lot of money. If you're not patient to build that wealth, you would always think you can trip over and get away with and it. And get away with because you can get away with it for ten years. Yeah, but they can because always probe you within that time frame. You know, that's what we forget that this is such an organized society that it might take. All 10 of a years sudden, IRS might just yeah. say, "You know what? We want to do an um, audit might, on you." It, look, Medicaid might just show up after ten years and do an audit, and you get into trouble. Mm. We again something you had forgotten even about. For forgotten about. So you see, we, we, uh, like I said, stereotype. Uh, it's a kind of bad word. We don't like to do it, but it's going to continue to happen in as much as you know. So, uh, Prof, how, how can we curb this? I, I need you know because this is setting us behind. We take ten steps forward, and just one stupid thing will happen, and it will push us all no. back. Now they, they will be like, "Oh, is he Nigerian?" I, you know, I, I, I really don't agree on that. I still think that uh, in, in, in cities like this and in major cities around uh, America, Nigerians are still held in very, very high regards, you know, because, you see, we still come with one of the best qualifications in most things in, in which we try to do. I understand you, Prof. And so it's, it's going to be very tough. That is the basis of our existence, to talk about those that are actually making an impact in the society, in the community, uh, you know, as Africans, not just Nigerians. However, when one person of whatever descent, Nigeria, Ghana, when that happens, they stigmatize the rest of us, and, they, they becomes, and the media is quick to project that into the light. But they don't see the doctor that just uh, separated the conjoint twins. They don't mm -hmm. see the doctor that operated on the fetus. They don't see the the you no, know they, no, all you, of those things. No, I, I think I think we overreact because they see all that. You know, you're talking about Doctor Lutoi. Doctor Lutoi is renowned around all the whole of America, and he's proud to say he grew up in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. I mean, he went to I, I knew he him went as to a, Ife, I, I, yeah, I knew like him as a, as a uh, as a student in Ife and all that. You know, so even their, their media is in awe of people like of, of that caliber. They don't care. Look, we, I'm telling you, we overreact. We think that every American is looking at us as being there. That's not true. Your qualifications in America will take you where you want to go. They don't care how many Nigerians have stolen prior to you. If you're qualified, you see, everybody is always given a chance, a very serious chance mm. in America. And that's the difference, really, with any other culture. I mean, we might want to, oh, no, like, no, everybody is given a chance. You blow it, it's still individual. Does it carry a Nigerian stigma? Yes, really within our community. Mm. Really within our community. That's where we are more concerned. But I'm telling you that the outside, bigger, larger community in America, they don't give a damn. You just mentioned people that, I mean, look at the job that Oluteri has just gotten. He's been with the Dallas Children's Hospital for years, mm, yeah, where he performed the miracles. Chief medical all that. director. That's going to one of the, I mean, a huge establishment, mm. world renowned. I, I'm telling that nobody ever says, "Hey, you better check this guy out proper as a Nigerian." Mm, they would. It's not going to happen. Yeah. So, but, but I, I still strongly feel like but maybe you're yeah. right about you know. Our reactions it's our to, reaction. to it, it's our reaction. the way we see it, because it's, it's directly affecting us, yeah. you know, as, as a people. Look at Masai Ojuri, president of Toronto Raptors. Right. They won the NBA championship. Right. Nobody is saying that 
Messiah. Well, that, that, is that, that is true. Okay, sit on it. He runs it. And then one of the chief of dollars. police in Toronto also yeah. is a Nigerian uh, from Delta. You know, yeah, I, saw, I, I, I saw an interview about so him. He's probably going to get yeah. his, himself fired. Based on what he said yes, on that. He's probably going to get himself fired. Oh, wow. You, look, there are things that, you know, that even if you think it, you don't say You're it. You're not to public. say it. Mm. If he's not fired, they will definitely reprimand him. Oh, wow. I, w I watched the interview and I said, whoa, 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 I'm a Canadian citizen too. And then I watched it and I said, whoa, 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 you can't say that and put it out there. And with his uniform on too. Yeah, with his uniform on. I said, you, you can't say that. I mean, it might sound nice and maybe truthful and all that, but we're just, look, one of the things we learn here in North America is the ability to balance not what is right or what is wrong, but what hurts and what does it. You know, you have to have a cure, you know, a level in your thinking and speech, especially if you're a public officer. Mm. I, I, I remember, and, and you're right about that, because I remember interviewing um, the chief of police, Houston chief of police, yes. and, you know, I will ask him some questions, and the way he will answer it, I'll just smile, like, okay, you don't want to say that, yeah. right? And just some things. Just, look, you can't come out, a, a, a police officer in Houston can't come out and, and say that, look, we're having problems with the Nigerian community mm. in fraud. He'll be gone tomorrow. You can't say that. Mm. He might believe that. And that's for him to believe. Yeah, that's for him to believe. But that should never be a public statement. It's a, okay. you know, it's what, what's going on publicly now mm -hmm. is, um, and I want us to talk about it, is the xenophobic attack in South Africa. Um, it's not new, but uh, I don't see. It, I don't think the government. I personally, opinion again, think the government is doing enough to curb it. Uh, I mean, we shouldn't have uh, African and African attack. Attack. I mean, in the, at this day and age. No, we shouldn't have any, any attack. Any, yes, whatsoever. You know, we're all human beings. I mean, d d despite you know the differences in wealth or social status or education and all that. But what is xenophobia really? It's just a fear, really, of the unknown or the foreign. You know, something that you you don't really know about, and you're just kind of scared of them. And it happens in really societies that are, or, or areas that are depressed. Areas that are depressed. Yes. Is social. it a natural thing? I, I'm not gonna. I, you see, when we want to go natural now, we want to go almost primitive and say we are, you know, at the borderline of animals. No, that's not what. You know, so I'm not going to say it's natural, but it happens more when people, uh, because I'm, I'll give you a pretty good example. How we never got to that stage. Nigeria never got to that stage in the Ghana must go issue. Well, I was going to say that when you said we never got to that, I was like, yeah. we, we kicked our Ghana out of Nigeria yeah, back then. we never then. got to the stage of trying to lynch them, to force them out. Oh, no, we didn't but, do that. But the tide changed in trying to get the West Africans out. We had about 2 million West Africans, mainly Ghanaians, in our country. The tide changed when our economy was going down. In the early 80s, we had had that boom in the 70s mm, of mm, oil right. and the price of oil. Mm -hmm. When the economy took a turn, oh, it was going down. who were the first people we blamed? The Ghanaians. Ghanaians. Prior to that, yes, a Ghanaian that has a PhD or a master's was teaching in the primary school, mm. had taken the job. Even one, our, our, the one that built our house was a Ghanaian. Yeah. I, I mean, I remember. Yeah, so, you know, so that's a first reaction. You react first to the to people the mm. that are not like you when economics mostly is going down. Hmm. And, but the Nigerian government were quick enough to realize that the best thing for everybody would be to expel them before it turns into an issue where you start to kill them. Attack them. To start to attack them, which will lead to loss of life. So that's an example. What is happening in South Africa, not really no difference. It's not because they have a downturn. I think South Africans have waited long enough where they're almost in their 25th, 26th year now after black took power mm. through the ANC and the release of Nelson Mandela. Mandela yeah. And life generally hasn't gotten better for blacks. And then they see all the blacks from Mozambique. Coming from, into their country. Yeah, from Zimbabwe, from Lesotho. Remember, Nigerians 
about only 30,000. So I heard. That's 2% of their foreign population. They have a 3.6 million foreign population. Majority of the blacks are from Mozambique, Lesotho, and Zimbabwe. Nigerians are only 30,000, 2%. And I'm sure in that 30,000, we probably have less than 10% that really all the others are doctors, engineers working in. Yeah, I heard some South Africans yeah. and their videos saying, if you do this, you, you know, where are you going to go to the hospitals to yeah. see? Because the hospital oh. you're going to go that will actually take you in belongs to those in Ni the, the, the Nigerians. They Look, belong to this. And that is, when a Nigerian graduates in medical school now, his first choice is South Africa. And South Africa will take him. Mm. And South Africa will, you know, give you the papers to come work there. Without the, with very limited transfer of certification and all that. Very limited. Unlike trying to come into America. Mm, to the United States, you almost start Canada, over again. Or, or, or mm -hmm. Canada. So that has been very, very good. So there's very little numbers in, in the lower of this thing. But, because, but the people that have been attacked are people that have businesses in what you might want to call depressed areas. Mm. So, you know, who did they go after first? Let's look. There's so many of these things that happened around. Uh, this happened in New York many years ago. I mean, we might not have called it xenophobic attack, but there was a time that, you know, in New York, the Jewish uh, corner stores were attacked mm. by the people that, you know, mm. live around there. Mm. You know, because look, it's, a, it's an economic depression. Anytime people feel, God, we're not getting enough of what we think we should be getting, our government isn't taking, up, taking care of us enough, the first person to go after are the foreigners are what people they consider foreigners. foreigners is that what we, was that what happened in the United States where they feel like uh, Africans are taking our jobs well we look up uh, you know we've, we've always kind of said that you know if you work in a place that is dominated by or not dominated but you have a lot of Nigerians the times the foreigners are saying it's like you guys are too many here I mean they're not gonna say it out it's never going to be a government, uh, nobody's ever going to put it that way. But, I'm, and you know, you asked the question, some of these things, are they natural? And I said natural might not be the word because it then puts us at a primitive, almost Yeah, from inception. Mm -hmm. But, you know. Because, I mean, only animals will act like that. And, and, that's, that, and that's why I said the killing of anybody because of government policy. Because the Nigerians in South Africa have absolutely no control what the South African government does in elevating mm. other blacks mm. in. They are just following the policy. They've been allowed to set up a business, uh, uh, use car, motor dealership, or whatever. And you come out and burn you it have down. Have a mechanic workshop, yeah, have, have a, mechanic, a corner yeah. store. And you come and burn it down, you know. Uh, you know, it's kind of, or burn, burn it down and even burn the guy alive. I mean, that's a barbaric thing. That's barbaric. You know, to do. So, so but, but, but then... Um, in revenge, mm -hmm. Nigerians feel like they can burn down, um, you DSTV, know, DSTV, uh, MCN, Stambi KBTC, IBC, um, uh, PEP, and other South African mm -hmm. originated companies, forgetting that those companies probably belong to Nigerians. And also, uh, South African, maybe they are franchised as well, or that the, the infrastructure does not necessarily belong to the South African government or even the South African individual that came to invest in Nigeria, yeah. but they do it anyway. Um, I, I read a post that says they left the uh, bookstore mm -hmm. untouched, right? In the building, let's say they go into a building mm -hmm. and they, try, they lose everything in that building, but in the bookstore, it was, everything was intact. Yeah. Because they said the people that read mm -hmm. do not lose, they yeah. don't steal. Yeah, well, and the people that steal, they do not read. Here, here's what I was going to ask you, just be, be before you even get into all mm -hmm. that. <laughs> do you have a friend, do you know anybody that went on that kind of a rampage? Mm, not that I heard of. It's almost impossible for you to know people that do that kind of thing. Mm. That might maybe you're trying to, I mean, that's why people are trying to use knowledge or academic knowledge, but that's not, it's, that's not the issue. It's just a lack of understanding because there are people that are knowledgeable, that are academic, that are ed well educated academically, that actually call for that kind of a thing. People are calling for the boycott of MTN. 
MTN is 55% of Nigeria's uh, telecommunication market, 55%. They employ 96% Nigerians. Hmm. MTN, you want so to know? That's, so, uh, and that, that, that will be my, my next question, mm -hmm. that the effect of this uh, xenophobic attack, mm -hmm. uh, what is the economic effect? I'll look at it from both sides. South Africa, you know, the president has said something, and I think it was a good statement. But people under him, assistant police commissioner, they kind of, kind of wishy-washy on yeah, the statements. You they, would know that, yeah. hey, they, they don't think there's anything wrong, wrong. with what is mm, going on. Mm. They're actually defending themselves that, hey, no Nigerian was killed. But someone was, people were killed. Of course. That were not South Africa. Of course. Killed. So that's not an argument. But that's what you hear from people below the president. The president has said the right thing. We don't, we have wholesome such behavior. This is wrong, blah, blah, blah. But why is South Africa not really, I don't know what came. They have economic power over, over us. As a country in Nigeria, they have economic strength. Now, people will say we have a bigger economy. Of course, we have a bigger economy. We have 200 million people. But you look at our national budgets in comparison. Mm. South Africa's national budget is about $100 billion. Nigeria, Which is like a quarter. Nigeria is $25 billion. South Africa buys oil from us to almost the tune of $4 billion a year. That's part of our revenue. So that, if that's boycotted, it, yeah, if, that's if they decide not to buy oil, and because remember, there's oil all over the place. Now. Right. Oil is a wash around the world. Oh, yeah. So they can, that easily can, we're not buying oil from you anymore. We're in trouble. We only buy half a billion worth of stuff. From South Africa. From South Africa. So all these conglomerates, so the, the businesses, mm -hmm. the MTNs, yeah. the... They are not governmental. No, they're not, they're, South Africa is a, a very liberalized uh, market style. These are not government companies. MTN is not, is not owned by government. Uh, DSTV is not owned by government. And all these companies, who owns DSTV in Nigeria? I think it's uh, Ogunsoya. Uh, who owns MTN? Have a bunch of big time investors that are uh, Nigerians and all that. Look, all the destruction that is happening to all these companies is probably going to end up in huge insurance payments for these guys anyway. Even the destruction of work. Right. So we're, we're still, hey, look, there's only And then one our way, people remain unemployed. There's only one way to solve this. It's not really a diplomatic way, but it's for South Africa to, to really clamp down on the leaders of this uh, act. You know, you've got to find a few leaders and really make a public spectacle about their trial, and their, you know, and their, you know, and let the world see. Yeah, let the world see, because you know, you see, you're not uh, mob. Mob behavior is very sh difficult to control, without it getting worse. So you see, the South African government cannot just throw police in there, and you know, especially when it's happening, obviously. Especially now that the police is well, even in support of the, you know. Yeah, they need to find a few of the leaders. Hmm. People leading this and make a spectacle of it. On the Nigerian aspect, what do you think they should do? On the Nigerian aspect, I mean, again, they do. I'll say people are hurt. They, I mean, you're killing my people. You, I mean, yeah, people are hurt. I, look, so I, 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 just I know, I know. No, Nigerians always say that. Look, like you just said, uh, they looted a few things that were consumable goods and all that. It's not about people are being hurt. You know, how many? How? Uh, please, I'm not. No, I'm talking about well. in South Africa, those affected. They are they have oh, relatives yeah. in in, oh. in Nigeria. That's what I'm saying. That people are hurt. They you you know if you kill my family, if you kill somebody, something's yeah. happening to them, and they don't feel safe. I'll, I'll be worried too. Yeah, yeah, but you'd be worried. But going to MTN. No, that's not encouraging. That doesn't solve. That, that's not that encouraging. That's no. Going to, no, I mean, I'm, I mean I've been against that from day one anyway. DSTV. I mean, people are saying keep, the, keep this TV, DSTV off the air. If you keep it off the air, do well, you have I, enough infrastructure in your country to even enjoy those facilities? No, I mean, I just ask a bunch of people that say that. Where are they going to watch uh, English Premier League? Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> you think China is going to give it to you? It, it, China China's may not even have the rights to it. Even if they have the rights, even if they have the rights, they can't pay for it. Two hundred million. They can't pay for it. No, two hundred million dollars. Let's not deceive ourselves. The reason DSTV can pay for it is because it's, pay, it's a pay channel. 
they pay with it from the money you pay them. And even even the person that brought DSTV to Nigeria, mm -hmm. is a Nigerian. Yeah, good point. I think he's a, he's a Nigerian. Yeah. So I, I mean, while we're hurting ourselves, we we think we're hurting them back. Well, but we hurt ourselves. Like I said, the analogy you were using about that they left the books is a lack of knowledge. It's a lack of understanding of how some of those things work. I mean, if you first know and learn and understand the, the South African system, people are even talking about them uh, uh, banning uh, South African airlines to come. Oh, please. Do you have Nigerian airlines? It, look, it's not even whether we have Nigerian airlines. Look, it, it's more relative, Nigerians, though. More Nigerians go to South Africa. They're, how many South Africans come to Nigeria? Except those going to see Joshua, Pastor Joshua or something. <laughs> they don't come in for business. Hmm. We are the ones that go there a lot. We go there to holiday. Okay. It's a huge holiday spot for Nigerians. People forget that. It's a huge holiday spot. I think bef uh, after Dubai. It's either before Dubai or after Dubai. Dubai is their number one, it's number one spot. And they go to Ghana, Ghana, too. They go to all other... Uh, yeah, it's when your money is not complete. That's when you go to Ghana. When your money is complete, you, you go, go to, to South, South Africa, Africa or, or, Dubai. or Dubai. So, Interesting. you know, we've got, we've got to be careful not to overblow this. Don't get me wrong. Mm. Loss of life, loss of property, which is instinctive to human beings. You know, you want to stay alive and you want to own something. It makes you valuable. When you have start losing those things. It's a serious concern. It should mm. be a serious concern for any government. What has impressed me more is that most is that the international com community has they taken notice here. and they're actually really prodding South Africa to do something, something about this because it is wrong. It is wrong. It is wrong. It is wrong. It's barbaric. Mm -hmm. But anyway, before, before I let you go, um, this is September mm -hmm. in the United States. Um, it's a memorable month. Um, I remember coming into the United States back in 2001. Um, just, um, I think it was two weeks after I, I got into the States was when um, the sad uh, event happened, 9-11. Yeah. What do you have to, to say about that um, event? I mean, it's something we're going to keep talking about every year, year in, year out, because yes. it's major, right? Um, yeah, it, look, it's probably one of the most depressing mornings I've had in America in all my, almost all my 30 years living here. I always remember it very clearly because, you know, kind of slept on the couch <laughs> the night uh, on September 10th, which is my mother's birthday. So I'd, you know, been with my mom and my other siblings in, uh, in Urbana. Then I was teaching in Chicago State University. And I kind of go back and forth. Urbana is about an hour and a half drive, you know. But I'd come home that day and, you know, been with my siblings. We'd done tons of celebrations. I came back late and I just kind of fell asleep on the couch sleeping. I would wake up in the morning and just turn on TV. And at that time, they were still arguing whether it was a cargo plane that went into or a passenger's you know, plane. Passengers. You know, they, they were still, and then right at that time, you saw the, 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 next the one. second plane. And then there's, there's another one going over Pentagon, they yeah. say. And so, you know, I remember it very clearly. It was really very depressing and then because just like we've been talking about how do people I don't care I don't no matter your political differences or I mean but how do you hate so much hmm. to take the lives of people that probably have nothing no with, with to American do with government because policy. you want to pass a message yes with American government policy someone goes to work that morning and never returns then when you start watching the videos of people jumping they were jumping to their death. They knew they were going to die, jumping from that height. But they also didn't want to be burnt alive when their offices mm. started getting burnt. So when you think about those things, mm. you really continue to say, wow, what a day. A really, really sad day in, in the world history. It left it's not, a it's just not American bad history. taste in, yeah. in my mouth. You know, I was fresh in the United States. Mm -hmm. And two weeks after this is happening, and we were told that there were um, hijackers. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the hijackers were students yeah. at the time, international students, which I was at the time. Mm -hmm. And I was like, so we couldn't even travel by air at the time without getting scrutinized. It was a, it's a, look, it, it has had so much ramification on the way America deals with so many issues. Issues, now. yeah. It changed everything. It, TSA. It's, because it's a frightening. Now you have to take off. You have you to imagine? strip before you no, even go to yes, security. See, what frightens me the most is that there's really nothing you can do 
to someone that is willing to kill himself in order to kill you. There's nothing you can do. Hmm. There's nothing you can do about it. And that is always going to be the fear that any country, anybody would have. Someone that is willing to die to kill you. And that changed the freedom yeah. that is said, you know, yeah. America is the land of the free. That it's perspective is still being said, but it's it, tough it, it, recognizing well, yourself as living hey, in the land of the to, free. You know, yeah. When it comes to economics, to principles, money, making money, America is still the freest society. It is, it is. You can go to any limit you, you, you want to get to. As long as no, you're willing yeah. to, to work hard for and it. And just stay on, the, stay on the straight path. Right. Don't look at things and say, ah, you can't do this in my home country. This has got to be a loophole. It's just a matter of time. Well, it's a loophole, all right? Yeah, but it's a loophole where you will come into that hole, <laughs> yeah. you know. Um, they get to you. But, well, I just want to thank you. Thank you. It's, um, thank you for reflecting on all of this, um, you know, the fraud aspect, the xenophobic at, uh, attacks and, um, and the 9-11. Um, you know, it's, it's, um, it's the month we are in now. September 11 is, is mm -hmm. just around the corner. And, you know, you just can't but think of those whose lives were lost um, at that event and, those who made it, those who witnessed it, that are still traumatized by it, yeah. uh, that still can't fly because yeah. of that, yeah. that, you know, that are afraid of staying in a high rise just because of things like that, you know, that are afraid that they can't even walk downtown mm -hmm. without thinking the building might collapse on them. Or, you know, it's a lot of stigma it's left in the, in the minds of people. Yeah, I mean, like and I said, it was a really powerful message. It, 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 that, that's and too and strong a message. It's too strong a message to... The innocents, the innocent yeah. ones, uh, I mean, you know where all these people were if you want to attack them, even if you have differences. Why don't you all face off and do what you got to do? Not, that's not the way you put fear into people. You put fear into people by doing the not obvious, you know. Nobody because ever you thought, want them to feel yeah, it. Nobody ever thought that people would fly a plane into a building knowing that they themselves will die. But when there's two wrongs, yeah. ever make it right. It's never going to, and, and, but you see, the people that think that way have never wanted to make it right. You have to understand that. Yeah, maybe they promise them seven virgins in, in when look, they get to heaven. They themselves know that, look, even when you are asleep and you dream such a good dream and you wake up, you say, You damn. come back to reality. You eh? say, damn. So I didn't win the lottery. Mm. You know, even though you won the lottery. In, in your dream. dreams, right. You know, there's reality now. Mm. It's unfortunate. Well, Thank you so much, bro. Always thank you. Being Please, and uh, we need to have you more. We need to. I, I love your wealth of experience and knowledge about. Don't, you don't know, exaggerate. It's not wealth of it. It is a wealth. Just, uh, just uh, have a pretty good. I hopefully have a pretty good. Uh, you I'm can undermine yourself the way you want. I know what I'm saying. I know what I've seen. I've spoken with you on different levels, and you know, you you have a unique view of. You know the word, but anyway, before I let that that happen, I will have to bring you back on this show again. I, I, I would always uh, acknowledge you, uh, the receipt. Please, that no that would be awesome. Well, you guys, you've heard it all. Stay out of trouble. Stop being fraudulent. Stop giving us bad names. We are good people. Like we are great people. You know, and this you don't have any reason to fight yourselves over anything, over it just because your economy. Do something about it. If you can't create um, a solution to a problem, you know, find someone that can. Invest in other things. Do something. Work hard. You don't have to think your fellow African or your fellow black man or white man, whatever, is the cause or the reason for your problem. So, you know, just l let's be mindful of one another. And for those that are deeply directly i would say affected by the event that happened in 2001 uh, on september 11 we our heart still goes to you we we, we don't hope that this is going to happen again we pray it will never repeat itself but this is the world we live in sometimes you know the government policy affects the way you live your life and it may not go away with the other country and you know things like that happen so that's why when you want to vote you vote in the people that will make policy that will affect your lives positively and that can help make the world a better place. In the meantime, stay tuned. We'll be right back. <laughs>
your shipping company delays your shipment for three months or more via ocean, you need a new shipper. If your shipments have been dropped off and are yet to leave after two weeks, you need a new shipper. If your shipments were lost or damaged during transit and there is no compensation, then you definitely need a new shipper. Every day your items are delayed, your hard-earned money goes to waste and your receivers are denied the benefits of using those items. And in most cases, there are no compensation. It is time for a new experience with ocean shipping and Ship to Ninja now offers you that experience. Ocean shipments are delivered within six to eight weeks to Nigeria or we will refund 25% of your shipping costs. We will refund in full your declared value and your shipping costs within 48 hours if anything happens to your shipments. You can get 247 alerts, online tracking, emails and text messages. With three containers leaving every week, we know the gift story. We will deliver when we say we will and to any location in Nigeria. Try us today and get 10% off your first shipment. Ship to Niger as good as taking it there yourself. Hi, my name is DJ Mixmaster Brown, president of the PDJs, and I'm Alpha Central. Work. I am Afrocentric. Welcome back to my community on Afrocentric Television Channel 15.8. I hope you have enjoyed the segments and on this episode particularly. This has been very informative for me. I, you know, sharing the experience with uh, Professor Patrick Omar Osagi has been an eye opener for me as well it is not just things are not just the way you seem to see them right um the attacks are not just merely because they hate you as a person it could be because there was an economy turned down or you know just because something they, they anyway bottom line is we need to be educated we there's no need for uh crime or war for whatever reason it may be and I think we need to live at peace with one another. Then, you know, I, I think I want to be, not just think, I would really love to be at that event that Gaba is putting together. Uh, you know, I need to be able to generate more revenue for myself, for my family. And so, um, and to, to, for your business to grow, you need customer service to be your keyword in whatever it is you're doing as regards your business. Without customer satisfaction, you know, you may get a turn down, which is not good for business. And they're also going to talk about how you can handle negative feedback and turn your critiques into potential customers. You know, th these are things that we need to grow our businesses, to grow ourselves. and. Anyway, if you are not there, then I would assume you're busy or maybe you're just not ready to, to make more money like I would love to. Anyway, until next time, please do subscribe to our channel on YouTube. It's on Afrocentric Television. Our Instagram handle is at Afrocentric TV. Don't touch the dial. Oh. You're going to be arrested, right? Sometimes, somewhere, somehow, someday, you need us. West Cut Law Group, let us fight for you.
West Coast Law Group is at 9525 Business Street, Suit 270, right in the Chase Bank Building, Houston, Texas, 77036, 832-831-1412, or visit my case at westcourtlawgroup.com. The law, the law, the law. Are you looking to buy a new or pre-owned vehicle, a sedan, truck, or SUV? Sterling McCall Toyota has got your back. With over 2,000 vehicles in stock, you can get a great deal of a lifetime. Lakon Alalikon. The sales consultant will make that happen. Good or bad credit? Call 832-807-3581. With over five years sales experience, Lakon Alalikon will help you navigate through the complexities of buying your dream car. Full service care. Two-year free oil change and tire rotation. Plus 36,000 bumper-to-bumper coverage. Just call Lakon Alalikon of Sterling McCall Toyota on... 832-807-3581. Better still, come on over to Sterling McCall Toyota, 9400 Southwest Freeway, Houston, Texas, 77074. Be sure to ask for Lacon Olalicon to get a special promo deal. 0% on Camry, RAV4, Highlander, and Tundra. Lacon Olalicon, 832-807-3581. Email at lagishin at sterlingmccalltoyota.com.